Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. Today's video we're going to go over how to make this really cute adorable little unicorn. Um, this is in the Luna Squish body format so it's pretty much just as big as like my hands are about six inches long so this is about 10 inches long of a body and I am doing the same body as the Luna Squish base. The only main difference is that I am going to be doing the bottoms a little bit differently in the sense that I am going to be adding color to the bottom of the feet. I'm going to show you how I do that for that, but generally you're going to be making the same body as the Luna Squish body and the same base head as the Luna Squish body with the eyes in the same placement. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click down below and you can see that there. I do the belly button and the general body shape over there. I'm going to show you how I do the different limbs on the bottom tip, but that's pretty much it. If you are interested in this pattern, it will be on Ravelry and on the description description down below there will be a coupon code to get that for free for the first week I believe is what I'm doing for the coupon code it's a little bit different than what I did for the bunny the bunny I did for a really long time and for the unicorn I'm just gonna go for a week for the coupon code so if you haven't and you are still within a week of me uploading this go down below and you can get the pattern for this for free all right I'm gonna show you how I do the nose in this video how to do the horn how I do the ears and how I'm basically changing the, uh, how I change colors for the bottom of the feet. And I'm going to basically do the same exact thing for the arms. All right, let's get started. For this pattern, I am using the Red Heart Soft in Off-White. I'm also going to be using Karen Simply Soft Party, which I'm going to be using in, instead of doing the colors where I use the purple, the teal, and the fuchsia. I'm going to do the same thing with the tealy, bluey color, the fuchsia, and I'm going to use this um, silver. I think it's called silver. I'm going to have it down below in the actual terms for the colors, but it's this really pretty like almost rainbow color. I wanted to do something a little bit different than the one that I have right here on my second unicorn. Ah, don't fall. Anyway, I wanted to have this one and this one's got the blue tealy color and the fuchsia color inside of it. So I figured that would look cool too. I'm gonna be doing the hooves in this color as well. So basically I'm gonna be using some Karen Simply Party and you're going to need a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a Susan Bates crochet hook and I'm also gonna be using a darning needle that is over here quick little darning needle and some stuffing and some 15 to 20 millimeter uh, eyes for safety eyes you always want to use safety eyes when you're doing amigurumi you never know who's going to get a hold of your little stuffed animal and you want to make it safer for babies all right i also used a little bit of blush but you can do the same thing with fabric paint or any other kind of paint i'm using actual legit blush and i'll show you how i do that later on in the video all right let's get actually started on these hooves So as I said before, you're going to need to be comfortable with doing the body and the head. The actual pattern for that is the Luna Squish base body, which I'll have linked down below. Uh, I am going to be doing the exact same thing as I did in that tutorial, but instead of basically doing it all in just the cream color, I wanted to make hooves, which means I have to change colors, I believe. There we go. I have 15 increased two just like i did in my previous apparently my cat decided to lay on this table eek all right just like in my previous video i increased to 15 and i'm going to go around one time with this 15 stitches i'm actually going to be doing something that is called um half rounds so i'm going to go around these 15 for just this round four five six seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe I'm not a, I don't know if I'm counting right. I'm just gonna keep going until I get to the marker essentially. There we go, these last two stitches are the last ones. If I can, either just having a hard time. There you go. So I went around once and we're essentially going to be going around once doing a half round 
and then doing a round of cream, which is going to be changing us to the main body yarn. The off-white cream color is what I'm using for the main body. You can use any other color if you want to use white or silver or any other number. Whatever you're making your main body color is what we're going to be changing to. This thing, I will say that this yarn kind of, you have to be really careful with it, otherwise it gets kind of weird. All right, so actually, instead of going through this last round, I like to do it this way, where I have, all right, I'll redo that last stitch. This is my last stitch uh, for this round. I'm going to go through once with the color that I was working with. I'm going to drop that yarn. I'm now going to pick up my main body yarn, my main color, and I'm going to hold this to the back a little bit and wrap it. I don't need a lot of a tail here, just enough. I will eventually just tie those two together just to call it good, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. And I'm going to pick up both strands at the same exact time. You don't have to do this. If you want to just do silver for two rounds and then go right into cream, you can do that. I just find that this makes it so that the seam is a little more seamless. And I like how that looks better. I'm going to move that away. There we go. So we're going to go into the front of the stitch, just like I do for all of my amigurumi. We're going to wrap with the silver and pull it through. And then we're going to go back and instead of wrapping it again with the silver, we're going to pick up the cream and go through both. So essentially we're making it so that the silver is silver down here and the cream is now changing to the top stitch right here. That will be just cream. You might have to adjust your tensioning and how you're holding things every stitch or so. So down with the silver, going through and picking up the cream and picking that up. Noticing that all of your top stitches are now turning to cream because of how you're doing this. So we're going to go through and pick the silver, go back, pick up the cream. I just hold both of them at the same time. Go through silver, go through cream, and we're going to do this all the way down, all 15 stitches. We're going to do half stitches. So go through, pick up cream, go through, let me pick up silver and then cream, silver first, and then cream. Because usually for a stitch, you would just go through, pick up the silver, and then you'd go through and you'd pick up the silver again. Nope, we're just gonna pick up the cream and that's what's making the change. Eee. My stuff's going everywhere because my yarn bowl is currently in being used. There we go. I need to get more than one yarn bowl. That's what I need to do. But then I always just end up filling it with everything that I am working on in the process. I use them as like project keepers and that's probably not the best use for them. Picking up here. And we're doing this exact same method when we change things over with the hands. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I change it over. I'm going to pick that up. There we go. And if you want to do a different hoof color, you totally can. The silver, cream. And on the last stitch, we're going to pick up silver and cream. And now that we have changed over, we are going to drop the silver. We are done with the silver. And we're going to just go around once with this cream and pick up all the stitches. So one, two, three just going around normal with the cream to change the color and I like to tie off the cream with the silver after I've gone around just because I find that it makes it so that it really doesn't have a seam at all and I'll show you what I mean by that when I get to the very end I'm going to slip stitch off actually no I'm not because this one already has the huff done so this is the active one that I chain with so hold on I'll show you what I mean when I get to the end of this row I'm not gonna slip stitch off, but for this one, you slip stitch off. And then for this one, you're going to just go around. Eek. There we go. I find that lately, I don't know if my tension is just way more than usual, but I keep splitting my yarn and it's driving me crazy. It's gotta be that my tension is off and that I'm just doing everything so tight. So we're going to hold off on this. I'm going to pull my string a little bit so that my stitch is open so that I don't lose it. We are going to have it so that that little part where we just added the cream and this one right here, we're going to knot this together twice. 
one. And you'll notice that when you knot it, it makes it so that it is a little bit more smooth in your transition. I like to double knot it just to make sure that it like doesn't move at all. It's there. And now that I've done that, I'm going to take my scissors somewhere. I don't have my fancy unicorn ones. Oh, I should have my unicorn ones for the unicorn. I'm going to cut my tail. I accidentally cut a little bit of tail there. Put my little tails back on the inside right there. And essentially, I'm going to continue on with my body like in the uh, unicorn body. I'm just going to do my chain nine make it into 48 stitches and then do my two decreases down the sides of the body all the way down. And I'll show you what it looks like once I have the body done and I'll show you how I do the arms. Um, it's not that much different than the Luna Squish as far as the head and the body and the arms are going. The main difference is gonna be doing the ears, the snout and the hair and the horn. So I will show you that once I get to the arms, I'm gonna make the rest of the body. I already have the head made right here and I'm gonna stuff that and put the body all together, but I will be back as soon as that is done with the arms. Bear back. All right, so we finished up our Luna Squish body. I just did the exact same thing for the arms as I did for the feet. I went around three extra times after doing all my increasing, and then I did my half rows in order to get the um, stitching so that it would look nice along the edges here so you can't tell where I began and where the next row starts. I have just the base of this done. Uh, again, if you're confused about how I got here, I have a link down below for how to do the base amigurumi luna squish. So, you know, go ahead and go down to the description. I'm also going to have this pattern available for a week for free on Ravelry. So you can go over there and use the coupon code to get that for free. So, you know, all that's going to be down to the description. And next up, we are going to work on the ears. So the ears are going to be, we're going to make two. So I already made one over here and I'm going to take these and I'm going to pinch them when I sew and I'll show you how I do that exactly. And then that's going to go on top of the head on either side of the head. Um, so we're going to go back to our main color yarn and we are going to do a little slip knot just like we did with all of our Luna Squish body parts. We are going to just do our quick little chain two. So one, two. And I'm going to, instead of placing six, like I have for all the other body parts, I'm going to place four stitches inside of this ring. So one, going back inside the ring, two, ring, three, four, and ring. So we have one, two, three, four, and the next round we are going to increase to six stitches. So the way that we do that is we are going two, I'm going to pull my string a little bit, and I'm going to go into the very first, it's going to be a little bit tight, but there we go, and we're going to just single crochet one, and then in the next stitch we're going to increase, so we're going to go one, back inside the same exact stitch, two. Next stitch we're just going to single crochet one, oh, I lost my stitch. There we go. One, and then increase. And this one's gonna be a little tricky too. You'll also notice that I'm only going through the front loop of my amigurumi. I like how this looks, it's a bit more bubbly. So now we have six stitches on our work. We're going to do the exact same thing where we single crochet one increased, and we're going to, on now round three, go from six stitches to nine stitches. We're increasing three stitches. So one, increase, and it's gonna be a little, and it's gonna be a little bit tight. So don't feel too alarmed if your tensioning is a little bit off. Going back inside that exact same stitch and increasing, single crochet, oh, one, increase a second time, one, two, inside the same exact like stitch. And it gets easier the more you do your increases. So one more time, one, and then in the last stitch of round three, we're going to increase. At this point, I feel comfortable with moving my tail and having my tail be my um, stitch marker. So I'm gonna pull that through that last loop through the center of it. 
and now I have nine stitches. And now from here, we're gonna wanna go from nine stitches to 12 stitches. And the way that we do that is we're basically gonna be increasing three stitches on our next round. So we're going to be creating an extra space between our increases. So we're gonna go one, two, and then on the third stitch, we're going to increase and try not to split our yarn like I tend to do. One, two, that's an increase. We're gonna go one, Pull our yarn a little bit out. One, two. And then increase this last stitch. One. Two. And increase this last stitch. We've done all the increases that we're going to do. I'm actually gonna move my tail and have that be a stitch marker for around the end of round four. And now for round five through eight, so for four rounds, we're just gonna go around all 12 of these stitches and just single crochet around. You should get something that looks like this. And I'm going to just go ahead and show you what I do with this ear. I'm going to take my darning needle. This is a bent one, which I usually don't use, but it's all I seem to have on my desk. And we are going to, once you've gone around four times, so you've done 48 more st stitches around your entire piece, you're going to take your piece, you're going to fold it in half. And I like to go through this stitch along here, and then along these two stitches here. I'm basically just gonna sew across like so, and then I'm gonna take this and go again through, it's hard with the bent tipped one. There you go, go through again. You should be able to go across three times or so. Whatever you feel comfortable with. We're gonna go across again, like so, and then go back. I'm gonna go through the center again, go through all the stitches, and then go through this last one again, go through the front, and then, you'll have a nice little ear here, but I'm going to take my tail. I wanna keep going through the front of the top, like these two, these two rows right here. I'm gonna go through these a little bit. I have such a hard time with the bent tip. There we go. I have a hard time with a bent tip uh, darning needle. A lot of people love bent tip darning needles, but I just do not. I think that they're hard to angle and I just, I'm not a fan of how like, they're just, they're not great in my opinion, but a lot of people swear by them because that's what works for them. And so there I have it so that it is uh, nice and sewn together. I am then going to take this and I'm going to sew it along the last increase round of my head along the side of the head. So I'm gonna take this ear, I'm gonna plop it my increase, you can tell where your increase has ended. So right around there, I'm gonna sew it along the head, like right, oh, come on, I hate bent tips. There we go. So right around here so that it can be, you know, on the head. So I'm gonna attach both of these on here and then I'm gonna show you what I do for the snout um, for the front of the face. Be right back. All right, so I have attached the ears, and next up we are going to work on the little nose or snout area. Um, I'm gonna post up a pattern before this, and I'm going to start by creating a slip knot, and we're going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I am now going to skip the last chain that I made and go into this chain and we're going to single crochet one, two, three, four, and five. And on the last stitch or 
the first one, really, the first chain, we are going to be placing three single crochet within that single chain. So one, go back inside, two, go back inside, three, and this will be a little loose. You can pull it. And I like to work it with my tail as if it is a part of the back stitches here when I go into them. But we are going to be working through the back of the chains that we created. We're going to go through the first one. And I like to keep my tail over my hook like so because that kind of crochets it into the work. And I'm going to single crochet one, two, to the next one three going into the next one four and the last one eek, five I keep my tail back and I'm going to go into this stitch right here the very first one that we created and we're going to put three single crochet inside of that so one go back inside two go back inside three. So essentially we just single crochet five, increase double, so two increase, so put three stitches within one, because instead of just making the one stitch, you'll add two stitches essentially by doing that. And then you single crochet five again, and then increase double again. Now we are going on to round two. We are going to single crochet one, two, three, four, and five. We are then going to just do a single increase on the next stitch. So we're going to single crochet one and then go back inside that same stitch and increase. We are then going to go into the next stitch and just do a simple single crochet. And on the next stitch, we're going to increase as well. This is going to be basically turning our corner. So one, and two and we're essentially going to do what we just did single crochet five increase single crochet one increase again so that we can round off our next side off round off so one two three four five we are now going to increase the next stitch one and two single crochet one and then increase once more so one go back inside that same stitch two we had 16 stitches on our first round and because we just increased uh, four stitches on this round essentially we now have 20 stitches on our work I'm going to take my tail and pull it through this last loop here just like I do for most of my work to show uh, where I am on my piece and we're going to do one more increase round um, before we just go around twice as the pattern states earlier so we're going to single crochet six one we're now on round three two three four five and six I'm going to do an increase so one and two I'm then going to single crochet two so one two single crochet one inside that one and then go into the second one and just do that and then we're going to increase again it's essentially we're just single crocheting around increases along each corner if that makes sense, if you can visualize it that way. So we're gonna do that again. One, two, three, four, five, ah, six. Do an increase into the next stitch. One and two. We're going to single crochet into the next two stitches. One and then the second one just two simple ones and then we're going to do a final increase so one and two for rounds four and five we're just going to keep going around like normal and i will show you what that looks like once it's done and then i'll show you how i add the nostrils i usually add the nostrils with this shiny pink yarn i really liked it i might try to do it with silver this time just to see um, 
what that looks like in comparison to the hooves. Actually, yeah, I think I'm going to do it with the silver, and I'll show you how I do that once I go around twice. So rounds four and five, you just single crochet around. Be right back when I can show you how to do the nostrils. Okay, so to do the snout, I double over some of the basic silver yarn or whatever color you want the snout to be. I think I want to go for a more muted color when it comes to this unicorn. So I'm going to double over about 12, well, 24 inches when it's double, uh, when it's full length, but it'll turn to about 12 inches when it's doubled over like so. I make sure that my ends are mostly the same and then I kind of pull on it and make it go like that. And then I take my nose. This is the way that it's going to be because I'm going to put my, I'm going to start sewing it from the top just to make sure that it goes the right way. There we go. And what I like to do is I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to go through the leftmost first increase if that makes sense. So the increase stitch is right there. I'm gonna go through that. I'm going to try as best as I can to keep my yarn going straight and not tangled up. I'm gonna pull until I've got about four inches on the other side. I'm gonna kind of hold it. And then I'm gonna take this, make sure that they're going straight and go through the increase stitch right below it. So like so, where my other increase round is on that side, I'm going to pull that. Oh, it's not staying straight. There we go. We're going to try to play with it for a second. I don't want my nostrils to be as obnoxious as on the other unicorn, so I'm going to make them a little bit smaller on this one. I'm then going to take my darning needle, and I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to pull on it too tight, and I'm going to go through the back, so through this way to the front of the other increase on this side. Excuse me, it's right there. I'm having a hard time finding it. Pull it and you'll find that there is going to be like a little bit of a line going across. That's okay. We're going to keep our work as straight as we can and we're going to go through the other increase round like so and I've got my two little nostrils and what I like to do after this is I'm going to take my scissors I'm going to cut it so that the string is loose and I don't have it on the darning needle anymore and I like to very lightly double knot I know that this isn't the way that everybody does it but this is how I do it and I'm sure there are much better ways out there I'm not going to pull it too tight because I don't want it to be too crazy. I'm going to now cut my strings. I could use it as more, but I'm not going to, like stuffing, but I'm not going to. I'm going to start sewing it along here on the face. And right as I get to the end, I'm going to stuff it. So I'm going to start sewing it and stuff it and then we're going to work on the horn. Be right back. All right, so I have done the nose. I stuffed it through the side as I went around. I like to kind of just stick the nose through the center where I want the center of it to be and that's how I sew it along the rest of it. Um if you guys are interested in a more like detailed way of doing the sewing for amigurumi. I do plan on doing a video on that. I just haven't quite yet. It'll be a part of my amigurumi basics uh, playlist that I have on here. And for now, I'm actually really happy with how this looks, the little nostril right there. It's a little bit more subtle than the other one, which as I bounce my camera, there we go, uh, which is a bit more loud. There's a time and a place for both of them, I believe. And um, I like either one of them. So I'm going to work on the horn next. I'm going to plop him over there and I'm going to get out my silver yarn again. I'm going to do the same thing where I do my magic ring where I make a slip knot and I chain two. So one and two. I'm then going to go inside my magic ring or the very first chain that I made and I'm going to place four stitches inside. I'm going to single crochet four inside this ring. So three, 
and four. I'm gonna pull my tail a little bit so that it does not have a hole in the center. I'm gonna hold the tail towards the back and here I've got, I'm gonna start working into the very first stitch that I made right here. I am going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, and then increase. So I'm gonna go from four stitches on my second row. This is technically my first row of the four that I just made. And I'm going to go from four stitches to six stitches. So I'm going to do one, and then increase, two in the same stitch, one, trying not to split my yarn as I always do. I do it a lot more with the soft party, I find. And two into this same stitch. This one's gonna be really difficult, I think. Go back inside the same stitch and increase. We've now reached the end of our second row and now we're going on to our third row. We're gonna go from six stitches to nine stitches. So we're essentially gonna do the exact same thing where I single crochet one, increase, one, increase, one, and then increase again. So we're going to do one and then increase, one, and then increase in the same stitch right there, and one, and increase. With that as the end of round three, and now we're going to go on to round four. All right, so we are on round four, and what you'll notice is you already have a little bit of a point forming. And what I like to do here is I'm going to just single crochet around for round four. So we have nine stitches, so one, two, three, four, five. I can get on screen, there we go, six, seven, I can get on that stitch, eight, and nine. I'm going to put my hook inside of that last stitch and take my tail and make it my stitch marker. Because now I can actually easily move it around and not just put it on too soon. Now we are going to increase from nine stitches to 12 stitches. And the way that we do that is we are going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And on the third stitch, we're going to increase. So single crochet two, and then increase on the third. So we're gonna be going three, four, essentially. One, two, and on the third stitch, you increase. And then one, two, and on the third stitch, you increase. We're gonna move our tail. And for round five through eight, we are going to just single crochet around. So one, on the five, we're just going to go around for this entire time. I'll be right back once I get all of these rows done. It is a little bit more time consuming just to watch me single crochet around every single one of these stitches. So I like to kind of fast forward a little bit. All right, so now we are in round nine, and what I like to do here is I'm going to increase from 12 stitches to 15 stitches. This is our last increase round. So one, two, three, and then increase on the fourth stitch. So two stitches inside that one. One, two, three, four and five, one, two, three, four and five. At this point we have a nice pointy horn. I'm pretty happy with that and I'm going to slip stitch off on the next stitch 
and create a nice long tail for sewing like I do for all of my attachments and I'm going to pull that through and what I like to do is then take my hook go underneath that stitch where I just slip stitched and I'm going to pull that underneath I'll show that again and kind of just let that go like that I kind of pull it and tug it so that it kind of becomes a little bit more neat in my opinion I'm gonna take this tail and pull it through that way when I cut it on the base it will look a little bit nicer and now I'm going to stuff this and I'm going to attach it with this part being what I take into the center of the um, horn like so so I'm going to take there's a darning needle in right now but I'm going to stuff it very lightly on the tip but I try to stuff it more and more as I get along the base and then I attach it so that it is right dead center to the forehead and next we are going to work on the little hair curly cues and then this unicorn is done and honestly I think the hair curly cues that we're going to be making these little guys are really what draws it all together and I will be right back one thing I will say as I'm sewing this is that you're going to want to kind of spread it outward and really stretch out where you put your um, stitches. So I'm going to go through the center here and then I go from the top down through the stitch, but I try to pull it outward. That way it doesn't get too like, so I'm going to go outward more uh, from the actual horn itself, if that makes sense. So like I go out away from it where it was before and then I try to go out here where it's a little bit past where the horn lines up and that's pretty much what I'm doing for the horn when it comes to that so I'll put this where it came up from over here and then go outward here where when I put my yarn up here it'll pull it outward a little bit more and make it so it doesn't get all kinds of shaped strangely, basically. I hope that makes sense. Side tangent over. Next up is the curly cues. So the curly cues are actually one of the easier things to do in this pattern. It's just super time consuming. Um, you make nine curly cues, which you then attach to the base of your unicorn horn. Um, I decided to go with a different color scheme than my other unicorn um, over here. I went with purple, pink, and teal, or fuchsia, I think is what the actual name of the pattern is, for this uh, unicorn here. But for the other unicorn that I am making right now, I'm going to go with pink, blue, and silver because those colors are in this silver uh, tone and I wanted to make a bit more neutral of a uh, unicorn on this instance. And you'll notice that I have eight curly cues made now. I am going to show you how I make the ninth and final curly cue. They're all the same exact length. They're all the same exact size. I'm just doing different colors. So we are going to make a slip knot and we are going to chain 41. So that's all kinds of fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice long string not splitting our yarn, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Trying not to twist our chain at all, that'll make things a lot harder on you. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So I'm going to pull my tail a little bit and I'm going to just double check that this is 41. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So I missed one. Oops, I must have miscounted when I moved earlier. So 41. I'll do a double count, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, so now we've got this nice 
long chain, you'll notice that the curly Q is significantly shorter uh, because when you do the curly cues, it kind of bunches up on itself, which is the entire point. And the way that we do that is in every single one of these chains, aside from the one extra from the 41, that one extra gets uh, skipped over in order to round out our corner here. But we are going to place three single crochets in every single one of these chains. It is a pain in the arse. So we're going to skip this first one and I'm not going to show you going down the entire time I'm going to do the first couple and then the last couple just to show you how the beginning and the end should look but essentially we're going to go into not this chain because that's 41 we're going to go into the 40th chain and we are going to single crochet one same chain two same chain we're going back into 40 and single crocheting again Skipping that one kind of rounds off our corner right here. And now we're going to go into the next chain. So chain 39 and we're going to put one, two and three. We're over bunching basically. We're making it so that there's too many stitches for this chain to hold. And that's what creates this kind of warping in this curling. We're gonna go into chain 38 and go one, two, three, chain 37, and one, two, three, chain 36, one, two, three, and you can already see that it is already starting to curl over on itself. So I'm going to go all the way to the end. I'm literally going to put three single crochet in every single one of these chains up until our last or technically our first chain here. And I'm still going to put three single crochet inside there and I slip stitch off. But I'll show you how I do the slip stitch off as soon as I get down the entirety of this length because this literally would probably take me about 10 minutes because it's a really long like curly Q. So, and if you want to make them longer or shorter, you can go based off of how many chains you do. I always try to add one extra so that it will, you know, be a nice corner to round over. Be right back as soon as this curly Q is done and I'll show you how I slip stitch off and how I attach these to the uh, unicorn and then we will be all done with our unicorn. Be right back. There we go. All right. So we've done the entirety of the curly Q except for the last stitch here. So I'm going to go into there. Oh, except for the last two chains, excuse me. Let me actually, you know, focus in on this. And I'm going to do three single crochet inside this one here. And now on the very last piece here, this little last starter chain, we're gonna just slip stitch off real quick. And I do a quick little chain as well. I'm going to leave a nice long tail with my unicorn scissors and I'm going to pull through like so. I'm going to pull that nice and tight and what I like to do, I'm sure there are better ways to attach my unicorn curly cues, but this is how I attach them. I'm going to figure out which color I want on the right front, which color I want on the right back, and what I want to do is kind of alternate them so that they're not all right next to each other. So we're gonna take our horn, there we go. And I'm going to take this one piece here. I'm going to feed it, I'm gonna figure out where I want it first. And I think I like it right there. So it's a little bit towards the front of the face, but not too close. I'm gonna pull that through. Then I'm going to take my two pieces here and I'm going to double knot them. Double knot, really tight. And then I feed the um, little tails through the entire head. And because this is a, I'm getting these out of the way. They're annoying me at this point. They're making it hard for me to do things. There we go. I'm going to feed it through as deep as I can of the, the head so that it's not just gonna pop right back out. I try not to split in between two stitches. I try to go into a, a, like a hole where the stitch is. I'm gonna pull that through. I'm gonna 
There we go. Hold up. Where do you come through? There we go. So that's about what I want to do. And I'm going to take this other tail. Now that I've double knotted both of them, and I'm going to put it down as close to the base here. I want to put him through as well. And then from here, I'm going to pull that through. There we go. Pull them both really tight. And then I'm going to hold this with tension and kind of pull on it. And then I'm going to cut it. That way, when it pulls back, it'll go inside the work. And you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. It's nice and tight. And I'm going to snip it. There we go. So now, you can't see... What I, the reason why I do that is there is oftentimes uh, just you can see the tails through the uh, work and it's frustrating when that happens. Now I'm also going to take um, my blue. I'm going to do the exact same thing but on the opposite side across from it, adjacent to it. Adjacent to it. So I'm going to take, it doesn't really matter either string, either I, I like to take the one that's been chained off so the last tail that I made and not the beginning starter chain. You can do it with either, it doesn't really super matter, but I tend to do it this way. And I'm going to make sure that it is across from it, from the other side, and I'm going to do the same exact thing. Pull him, kind of make sure that it's flat. I'm going to take these two and double knot them, pull tight and pull tight and do the exact same thing where I hide the tails on the inside. If you want to like reinforce this you can, you can totally sew a couple stitches on the base. I always try really hard to make sure I get it into the stitch that I went through originally. There we go, pull it through that side. Try not to get stuck. There we go, as I bounce everywhere. Flip our head, pull it tight, snip, see, and if you don't, you can always kind of wiggle your work a little bit and get the rest of the piece so that the tail will go through. The blue seems to be a bit more aggressive. There we go. And see, if you wiggle around a little bit, it'll get rid of the tail completely. You can't see the blue at all. So I'm going to do that with the rest of my pieces and then that is pretty much all there is to this pattern. She is all done. Alright, so I basically did that method of just knotting them for all nine of the pieces. I usually start out by going with these two and then I attach these two and then these two and then these I go alternating uh, so that they are uh, pink. I do the first color, second, third, first, second, third, first, second, third, and I make sure that they're all kind of equally spread out from wherever I decide that that's where I want them to go. One thing that I did not show in this tutorial so far is how I do the little blush on the cheeks, and essentially I just literally take dollar store blush, and I take one of my little brushes, go light on it. I always go light first. Um, and gently start adding things, whereas you can always add more, but if you add too much blush at once, then it, you, you can't take away. So I always kind of start off slow, gently adding, and kind of blending outward, like so. And if I want more blush, then I add more. I always like to add it to the slight right of the eye and underneath and I blend outward so that it will be nice and diffused. It's not too loud, not too obnoxious. You can also add a little bit to the inside of the ear. I like doing it just slightly on the inside of the ear and I blend upward a little bit. If you don't want to add blush, you don't have to add blush. I like adding blush to my amigurumis. I think it adds a slight little touch to my pieces and I think it's really pretty. I just lightly add legit blush. A lot of people will also use um, 
fabric paint when it comes to adding blush. I just don't. I think that there's a lot of margin for error and I can always remove this if I'm not happy with it. Um, that is the downside to this is that it will fade a bit more than fabric paint, but I just, I can't bring myself to doing it. So that's pretty much all there is too. That's what I do for my unicorn. I'm very happy with how she turned out. I remove this before I, you know, damage something. Anyway, I'm happy with how she turned out. She's a little bit more neutral with the nostrils uh, that I chose. You can really do anything, but I believe my mom said that she looks a little bit more like a pig than a unicorn. So I, that's why I went with a bit more of a neutral um, tone when it comes to this one. In my next video, I'm actually going to be working on how to make a Luna Squish kitty cat. I'm really excited about it. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing more of the Luna Squishes and what I can do with their bodies. Um, this is a calico that I made uh, with the cat design. I'm not going to show how to do the little uh, changes of color, but I will show how to do the body, how to do the tail. I already showed how to do the body in the Luna Squish base body, but I'm going to show how to do the tail and how I did the nose with the embroidery on the nose and how I do the ears to make it look like a kitty cat. Um, the pattern will, for this will also be available after that is uploaded for a week. I think I like doing that. It's kind of fun. If you guys are really interested in the pattern for this, you know, the link will be down below. It'll be free for the first week, like I said at the very beginning of the video. So if you are interested in this pattern and you really, really want it free, go ahead and in the first week that this will be posted, it will be free. So you can get that on Ravelry. It will be in your uh, stuff. I've gotten a lot of downloads on the Luna Squish Bunny and it seems to be a really popular thing that I did. So I'm pretty excited about that. That also should still be available uh, right now on my Ravelry. So if you go over to the Bunny Luna Squish, it should be available for you to get the bunny of this as well for free. If you like videos like this and you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. I also have a PayPal. So all that's down below, all of our social media stuff. And really, until next time, guys, bye!